thank you for the, the introduction. Uh, so I'm going to talk about fish welfare to prevent sea less issues. So some experience from the Faroe Islands. Uh, these are the owners of Hiddegard, Atli and Reyen, two brothers. Uh, they own the company, so it's, it's a family owned business. And uh, this is our philosophy. The first value is sustainability and to be open and honest, innovation and financial prudence. And then we have some goals, reduce the world's best salmon and fulfill the potential of the pharaohs. So employees are, are of course extremely important when it comes to fish welfare and it demands good leaderships and meticulous employees and a sufficient number of employees. Uh, we have a strong development team and we have a time to concentrate and focus on new ideas and research, which is important. And therefore, I think it's safe to say that it's a very short time from, from idea to action at Hindenburg. Those of you who know Atle and all this is. Uh, so exposed farming, uh, a bit of history. Uh, we started farming in, at a shelter site in 1984. And then in 1988, we moved to a really exposed area at that time, which was a huge step. This was mostly due to algae problems. Uh, but since 1988, we have continued in the same direction for exposed farming. And, uh, ever since, the sea lice has been the main driver for, uh, to exposed farming, together with, with uh, some issues with sediments. Uh, but the sea lice hasn't only been the driver of exposed farming, it has also been the main driver of all other developments at the uh, from, from having onions in the pens to laser shooting sea lice, we've tried uh, around everything that is available. But sea lice uh, as a driver this is a, a really good index of our hatchery. And it has ever increased, and we're now at uh, 650 grams on average. Uh, I think 700 uh, this year, uh, where others are at 300. This was our hatchery in year 2000. This is how it looks today. <laughs> this is the part from 2000. And this has been a, a production site ever since. To, from 2010 to 2019, it has been in construction. But when we finished in 2019 with the construction, we could really focus on, on the quality of the smolts. So we now have a low mortality, a very good growth potential, and our smolts start feeding right after they are stopped, usually. Here we see the shift when we stopped uh, building in 2019, and we now record low mortality, stocking mortalities uh, of uh, below 2%. Okay. Bit of development here, this is how we, we stock the smolts by uh, tanks uh, in the trailers. We connect to a pipeline on our farming site. The salmon go through the pipeline, as you see here. Speed is the regulated with uh, <coughs> pumping uh, seawater into the pipeline. And here we measure and uh, add oxygen. And again here. And this pipeline is, I think, 1,200 meters long. Uh, but it's a really... Uh, stress-free transfer of the smolts. Uh, you see very clearly that they just swim straight down and are, are ready to feed straight away. Uh, Heiriger Bergson has just started with us. He's a doctor in fish, fish physiology, so he's doing a bit of uh, swim respirometry on the smolts, which is really important to ensure that they are, are able to cope with the extreme uh, exposure or the extreme currents so uh, and to make sure they have a, a good condition to, to start feeding right away a bit on the growth this is tdc or vf3 hitting good again green other farmers in the ferros red so we have uh, had a good growth uh, always but since the quality of the smolts together with other other things was better, the growth has really exploded and, and we are harvesting pens of 
TDP of 4.45, so. and, uh, and that is also world records uh, all over. Together with the small quality, uh, we have put a large effort in the feeding and our strategy with feeding, which is a really, really important. We use a pellet detector and a completely automated feeding uh, from the Faris company, Faris E. So this, the feeding just regulates itself uh, by computer. So this is the result, short time on the green is uh, hitting yard. We are down to 11 months on average for every pen. Others are at uh, 15 to 16 months. So this means uh, that over a period of time we have more farming cycles and more fallow periods. So this is of course uh, logically uh, better, uh, reduces the biological risk and means fewer sea lives when you shorten the time and uh, improve the welfare. And we think this is a, a very sustainable way of farming. This is our average number of salmon on sea at all times the last four years. We have a 7% decrease in salmon on sea. But at the same, same time, we have a 43% increase of our production. So if you produce large molds with fast growth, you will have a and keep the same number of salmon on your sites. You will have an increased production, fewer sea lives, less handling, lower biological risk. But of course, the intensity of the sites will increase, so we'll have an increased pressure on the sediment. But again, the solution is exposed farming, where we resuspend the sediment. So, yeah, a bit about lumpfish, which are really good for salmon welfare, as they don't uh, affect the salmon at all. But the lumpfish welfare uh, really has to improve. Uh, we think we are doing our part. Uh, they are really uh, efficient sea lice grazers, uh, vary a lot throughout the year, but they are critical for our strategy. And, uh, uh, and the mortality at Hiddenfjord has decreased a lot the last years. Uh, from here we have gone down about 40% in this period in our mortalities. Also we use a lot fewer lumpfish now. And we have a, I think the most important thing is we have developed new vaccines, autogenous uh, vaccines uh, from our own bacteria. Uh, one we had a, a lot of problems with was Pseudomonas anguidoseptica, which has been eradicated by the vaccine. And also Pastorella, uh, we started with this vaccine two years ago and we haven't seen the uh, disease since. The next thing we'll We'll try is uh, the Nisibaculum vaccine. Hopefully, this will help with the greater disease. Okay. And then we are, I think we're only down to two diseases, and, and we have, don't have any major disease uh, mortalities. Uh, or it's, it's, it was very common, but this is very rarely now. We're involved in a lot of research and uh, we use a lot of strategy with our. Uh, we made a lot of feeds, uh, heights, and, and, and uh, a lot of research on how we feed them. Now, overall, I think we have reasonable hope that the mortality and the well-being of lungfish will come to a satisfactory level, uh, uh, but there's a long way still. So, a bit of planning and research, dynamic measurements. Uh, for this, uh, I I've taken an example. This is our most problematic sea life site, Servoer, where we have a, we have measured uh, currents by boat, so we have a really good overview of how the current is in the site. We have uh, bottom placed uh, current measurements, wave measurements, a lot of those, CGD measurements to get an idea of the freshwater flow, and uh, a lot of sea life trolls, which Gunnburns made. So we have a really good understanding of, of our sites. Uh, this is the farming area here and here. I don't really see it. But the outer pens uh, have a strong currents, so they have a lot of external sea lice coming to. And the inner pens uh, are more an internally infected sites. So uh, uh, for our stra strategy here, we, we stock the salmon as far in the field as possible. 
and therefore we have a, a long period until sea less reach the salmon. But as soon as we see sea less on the salmon, we move all the fish out into the exposed area where the sea less will be flushed more away to minimize the self infection. So sea less modeling, try to track them. This is his model, we will have a talk later. Uh, he uses the same theory of internally and infe uh, externally infected sites and then everything that's in between. So this is an agent based model, uh, tracks all develop development of all uh, CLS stages depending on temperature. And uh, this is just an example of how, how we use it. Serve our again, our most problematic site. Uh, it's, it's not easy to understand this, but. Uh, the points are our sea lice counts, and the lines are the model. And then we have treatments uh, with the columns. So, uh, as you see, the, the model fits the counts extremely well, also when we have a, a treatment. And uh, then we can plan our treatments uh, really well. For example, here, we saw that if we didn't treat at this time, the sea lice would increase like this exponentially. So we just use the model to say exactly when is the best time to treat. <coughs> and uh, yeah, I think this is a crucial tool for all, in, especially internally infected sites. And then, uh, yeah, the need for appropriately strict regulations. Again, this is a, a video from Trendur Kraxin, a particle simulation of sea lice around the chiros with the current. The first is of course a small country and uh, a sea lice in their infective stage will survive for around 12 days. You see the time counting here, we're up to 4 days now. So in a very short period they will travel all around the pharaohs. So therefore uh, all sites and all farmers uh, affect each other so uh, we really need strict regulations to avoid the tragedy of the commons. So a bit about how it's going, this strategy of ours. I, I said the, the growth in the ferals had stagnated for the last years. We don't see that at all. The production is going up. This is our mortality, the green line, and other farms in the ferals. We are, our total mortality is now 4%, where others are 13, 14%. And this is even more clearer if you look at mortality of large salmon, so after three months on sea and forward, then uh, the difference is, is even bigger. Uh, so a bit about the sea lice. This is the four last farming cycles of our, our sites. So are the most problematic one. You see the number of, of totally produced salmon lice at this site has decreased a lot mortality as well. And here we have, uh, as I said, the most problematic site, so we have a lot of, of treatments. Uh, mechanical, uh, but then the shift over to chemical. And as we see with all this strategy, we, will, we reduced uh, the number of DLAS pens by a half. This is our, our other tracks where we don't have problems, so it's just uh, sporadic treatments and some years even without any treatment at all, only with lungfish. Uh, again, here. And that was our a bit more, but, but also sporadic. Just a, a few pens uh, every year. And this is the, uh, again, the result another way. Uh, this is the production of. of Salmon of the pharaohs, Pippin Fjord has around 19, 18 to 20 percent of the production of salmon, but we only have uh, from 11 percent uh, down to 7 percent of the sea lice. A bit about uh, disease surveillance. Uh, this is our, we take a lot of samples, especially the last years, sampling for a range of different uh, disease or, or pathogens. So these are all of our detections from 2007 to until today. 
So we have a lot more detections now, but that's because we're looking for more pathogens. It's not because we have bigger problems. But uh, uh, the only outbreak we've had of a disease on our shaman since 2007 is an outbreak of AGD to Jill uh, amoeba. And this is number of, of samples taken, and you can see the reaction the following year. <laughs> we had a lot of, but now uh, we have calmed a bit down. So this is our newest addition to our strategy. We have bought four semi-closed containment systems. Uh, so the idea of this is, is this is uh, in 2010 we had. Uh, the salmon on land for 10 months and 20 months on sea. And then with the new hatchery, we, everything is upside down, so the salmon is 20 months on land and only 10 months on sea. And with the new semi-closed containment cages, we will put our smalls in those, and when they reach around 2 kilos, they will go to sea, so hopefully in 2022, it will only be 5 months on sea. So that's the idea, and uh, it's, it's for our most problematic site. And with this, we hope to uh, hopefully don't use any any uh, dealers at all. So coming to the end, for the future, Hittenberg will continue to move to more exposed sites and uh, expand our already exposed sites. Uh, uh, the most interesting is the current barrier, I think. And then we'll start with the semi-closed containment systems. And we'll continue to lobby for stricter regulations. And this is, uh, if we think if we get the sea dust level of the pharaohs down, uh, we would, wouldn't have to handle or use chemicals at all. Uh, the salmon farming in the pharaohs is under pressure. There are too many sea lice, and as you saw, there are way too high mortalities. Uh, the farming companies have been 160 times above the sea lice limit, which is one adult female per salmon, since uh, October 2017. And out of these 160 times, we we only have uh, seven times. And there are uh, there are diseases in the pharaohs. Too many. And uh, sea temperature is, of course, increasing. So new diseases will probably emerge. So uh, it's under pressure. And uh, lastly, uh, our opinion, what the industry should focus on. Uh, large molds, we think, of good quality is important. Keeping uh, the same number of salmon to uh, ensure sustainability. Uh, fast growth on sea. A lot of Plumfish research is needed, and we think the focus should be on getting the mortality down. Um, genetics, sea lice modeling uh, is a crucial tool, and strict sea lice regulations. Uh, we want 0.2 adult females, we think that's a good level to be at. It will probably be problematic for some in the short, in the short range, but in the long range it will be beneficial for all. Close farming and semi-closed containment systems, uh, uh, we are very hopeful about this. Thank <laughs>
Yeah, definitely. Is it, is it so, I'll, I'll probably come back in my email presentation, I'll touch the subject of rainbow trials. That's, if you use larger small, do they uh, grow better whether, well, if you use 600 gram, one kilo, or 300 gram small, which, which shows the best, or performs the best in the marine environment? I think the large ones perform better. This is our general idea of it, but I don't have any numbers to okay. I could look into that. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you're talking about exposed sites, and uh, that way you get rid of all the nodules that you use to donate them to the rest. But don't you also have a lot of incoming? Sea lice. Sea lice? Yes. So, does that make it? Yeah, it makes it uh, difficult, especially if there's a lot of sea less. Then it, uh, you'll have sea less very fast when you put it. In. And, that's, and that's another question. But Do it's you know really anything about whether the sea lice, how good they are at infecting if you have that much current? Yeah, the infection will probably not be as easy for them to attach to the salmon. Definitely, when the current. Do you know that, or if we just. No, it's just an uh, estimate. I think there's just some research on it. If you're in an exposed site, your idea is that even though... Yeah, it's so much easier to handle because you have a line in your growth. It's not exponential. So if you treat an uh, externally infected site, then it will start from scratch again with a slow line in your growth. When you have an exponentially infected site, if you treat, your fjord is still full of sea lice larvae. So just uh, three weeks later, it's exploding again. But you're in a situation where there's more export than import. Mm -hmm. If you're on a, when you're on an exposed site, is what you're saying. It's better for you to be out. Yeah, yeah, definitely better. It's easier also because longfish will do, uh, make a huge difference there. Longfish don't have any chance if you have an exponentially growing site. Mm -hmm. They cannot compete with the growth, exponential growth, but they can compete with the linear growth of uh, an exposed site. But they swim fast enough? Yeah. Yeah, we have a good. Yeah. So, uh, we really need strict regulations to avoid the tragedy of the commons. So, a bit about how it's going, the strategy of ours. I said the, the growth in the ferals had stagnated for last years. We don't see that at all. The production is going up. This is our mortality, the green line, and other farms in the ferals. We are, our total mortality is now 4%, where others are 13, 14%. And this is even more clearer if you look at mortality of large salmon. So after three months on sea and forward, then uh, the difference is, is even bigger. Uh, so a bit about the sea lice. This is the four last farming cycles of our, our sites. So far the most problematic one. You see the number of, of totally produced salmon lice at this site has decreased a lot. Mortality as well. And here we have, uh, as I said, the most problematic site. So we have a lot of, of treatments, uh, mechanical, uh, but then the shift over to chemical. And as we see with all this strategy, we will we reduce uh, the number of DLAS pens by a half. This is our, our other sites where we don't have a problem, so it's just uh, sporadic treatments and some years even without any treatment at all, only with longfish. Uh, again, here. Well, those are a bit more, but, but also sporadic. Just a, a few pens uh, every year. And this is the, uh, again, the result another way. Uh, this is the production of, of salmon of the pharaohs. Pitman Fjord has around 19, 18 to 20% of the production of salmon. But we only have uh, from 11% uh, down to 7% of the sealant. Mm -hmm. A bit about uh, disease surveillance. Uh, this is our, we take a lot of samples, especially the last years, sampling for a range of different uh, diseases or, or pathogens. So these are all of our detections from 2007 to until today. 
So we have a lot more detections now, but that's because we're looking for more pathogens. It's not because we have bigger problems. But uh, uh, the only outbreak <coughs> we've had of a disease on our shaman since 2007 is an outbreak of AGD to Jill uh, amoeba. And this is number of, of samples taken, and you can see the reaction the following year. <laughs> we had a lot of, but now uh, we've calmed a bit down. So this is our newest addition to our strategy. We've bought four semi-closed containment systems. Uh, so the idea of this is, is this is, uh, in 2010 we had uh, the salmon on land for 10 months and 20 months on sea. And then with the new hatchery, we, uh, everything is upside down, so the salmon is 20 months on land and only 10 months on sea. And with the new semi-closed containment cages, we will put our smalls in those, and when they reach around 2 kilos, they will go to sea, so hopefully in 2022, it will only be 5 months on sea. So that's the idea, and uh, it's, it's for our most problematic site, and with this we hope to uh, hopefully don't use any, any uh, DLAS at all. Coming to the end, for the future, Hittenberg will continue to move to more exposed sites and uh, expand our already exposed sites. Uh, uh, the most interesting is the current barrier, I think. And then we'll start with the semi closed containment systems and we'll continue to lobby for stricter regulations. And this is, uh, if we think if we get the sea dice level of the pharaohs down, uh, we would, wouldn't have to handle or use chemicals at all. Uh, the salmon farming in the farms is under pressure. There are too many sea lice, and as you saw, there are way too high mortalities. Uh, the farming companies have been 160 times above the sea lice limit, which is one out of females for salmon, since uh, October 2017. And out of these 160 times, we, we only have uh, seven times. And there are, uh, there are diseases in the pharaohs, too many, and uh, sea temperature is of course increasing. So new diseases will probably emerge. So uh, it's under pressure. And uh, lastly, uh, our opinion, what the industry should focus on. Uh, large molds, we think, of good quality is important. Keeping uh, the same number of salmon to uh, ensure sustainability. Uh, fast growth on sea. A lot of lumpfish research is needed, and we think the focus should be on getting the mortality down. Uh, genetics, sea life modeling uh, is a crucial tool. And strict sea life regulations. Uh, we want 0.2 adult females, we think that's a good level to be at. It will probably be problematic for some in the short, in the short range, but in the long range it will be beneficial for all. Exposed farming and semi-closed containment systems, uh, uh, we are very hopeful about this. That was it. <laughs> There is a difference in the time of year, how uh, when the temperature is low, they will not we have as good a start. So, Shamartan is probably a better to answer this. But, but also, besides, the largest walls uh, have performed really well. 
Yeah, definitely. Is it, is it so? Cool. I, I'll, I'll probably come back in my mouth pre presentation. <laughs> I'll touch the subject of rainbow trials. That's if you use larger small, do they uh, grow better? Whether, well, if you use 600 gram, one kilo, or 300 gram small, which which grows the best, or performs the best in the marine environment? I think the large ones perform better. This is our general idea of it, but I don't have any numbers to it. Okay. I could look into that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you talk about exposed sites, and uh, that way you get rid of all the nodules that you use to donate them to the rest. But don't you also have a lot of incoming? Sea lice. Sea lice. Yes. So does that make it? Yeah, this makes it uh, difficult, especially if there's a lot of sea lice. And it, uh, you'll have sea lice very fast when you put it. And that's, and that's another question. But do you really know anything about whether the sea lice, how good they are, infecting if you have that much current? Yeah, the infection. They'll probably not be as easy for them to attach to the salmon. Definitely. When the current do you know that, is, or if we just. No, it's just an uh, uh, estimate. <laughs> I think there's uh, some research on it. Oh. If you're in an exposed site, your, your idea is that even though... It's so much easier to handle because you have a line in your growth. It's not exponential. So if you treat an uh, externally infected site, then it will start from scratch again with a slow line in your growth. When you have an exponentially infected site, if you treat, your fjord is still full of sea lice larvae. So just uh, three weeks later, it's exploding again. But you are in a situation where there's more export than import, even if you're, a, when you're an exposed site, is what you're saying. It's better for you to be out. Yeah, yeah, definitely better. And see, sure, also because lungfish will do, uh, make a huge difference there. Lungfish don't have any chance if you have an exponentially growing site. Mm -hmm. so they cannot compete with the growth, exponential growth, but they can compete with the linear growth of uh, an exposed site. But they swim fast enough? Yeah. Yeah, we have a good, uh, Yeah, they try well. Yeah. And the sites where they're, where they're exposed to the birds, they usually get the sea that's Esben, I have a question. I also have, uh, my name is Jonas from Benfar. Uh, I think if we are asking questions, I, I would suggest that we introduce ourselves. You know? This is a very nice audience here and it's going to be very nice discussions. So please, uh, my question here, uh, Esben, you're doing a lot in, on the numbers in, in reducing mortality and so on. And you mentioned, uh, you mentioned vaccines and uh, this is a tremendous important work. What is the uh, acceptance of the industry and the authorities by using lungfish? Are they okay or not? In no, the no, definitely not. Uh, some sites have, have gotten, uh, they have, uh, the government doesn't allow them to use lungfish. Uh, so it's, it has to start in Paris to be really, it's going to be a big problem. Definitely. But for me, I think if, if you are, Working tirelessly of, on improving it because it's, it's in the early phases still. Uh, then I think, uh, and, if, and if you have a, a clear uh, strategy on how you're going to improve the mortality, then I, sh I think we should be okay. Yeah. Thank you for a very nice visualization of the Romani <laughs> So. Uh, um, thank you for this very nice visualization of the current around the Faroe Islands, where you can see the Kumbukoki streaming around and getting access to any fish uh, around the sites. So uh, I remember quite a few years ago the, we examined some of your Salmutruta, Salmutruta the, uh, the brown trout you have in, um, in the Faroe Islands. So I was uh, actually um, would like to ask you if you have any uh, problems with the, the concerns of the NGOs having concerns about the, the wild uh, fish in the Faroe Islands. I know you don't have any salmon rivers, but you have trout. So have you had uh, any problems with uh, these issues? Yeah, so it's uh, actually it's the fish farm companies, they have yeah, ASU certificate. <laughs> 
So we have to do that. Okay. And do we find any? But I mean, we, uh, we find some uh, sea lice on the but not uh, extreme amounts. So, but we find sea lice on the ground, and, and, and we have uh, we are also looking at how they can migrate to the sea and to the river again to get an idea on, on the stock that's there. So, so but it's really in the early stages, so we don't know that okay. much. But you, so you are concerned about this? Yeah. I have one more yeah. question if you want. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, how are you treating the fish? You, you mentioned chemicals, but what are those chemicals you are using when you treat the fish? Bath treatments. Some sun and uh, bath treatments. Yes, mm -hmm. it's chemicals. Is it uh, some sun? Is uh, it formalin or hydrogen dioxide? No, could you add some sun? Yeah. It's uh, asymmetrical. Asymmetrical. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Phosphates. Yeah. Yeah. And slides. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I'm most interested in the byproducts of the, all of this. So my question is, what is the yield when you have a full-grown salmon? And I assume it's not 100%. And then the question Sorry, is, no what, do do? <laughs> huh? what do you do with uh, that you cannot sell the fish? You know, the the more morts, uh, the dead mortalities go into ensilage and you were used for milk feed and so forth. Yeah, do you yeah. know the yield? No. Probably somebody else. I'm Marco Puebla from Phoenix Fish Farmer Association. Thank you very much for your very interesting presentation. Since in Finland we are going to move our fish farms more to the outer sea. I'm very interested to see the, the techniques that you are using in parallel. Are you able to share this information with us? Yeah, we, our philosophy is uh, to be open and honest. Was our on to the very top there, so no problem. I will be in touch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Good morning. My name is Jon Stelmson, and I'm from the Ministry of uh, Industry and Innovation. Uh, I was particularly interested in the uh, sealess modeling that you had, and since the ministry is in charge of uh, issuing regulations on uh, this uh, on agriculture, we have uh, recently introduced so the requirements for these farming companies to have a strategy on how to deal with sealess. So. How does the modeling, um, the, the application for treatment, how does that go together in terms of the regulations and, and the uh, context that you offer? It's a very new tool. Trentor has, has developed it, and you'll have a talk later. But uh, the, uh, the authorities are not using it yet, but uh, it, there has been some talk about it. Probably they will. I don't know. Please, please.